Hey, what's up everyone? It's David here. I'm going to show you how to terminate a coaxial cable with an F connector screw type on here. As we'll see, there's one right there as well, which I'm going to be using. Um, and you can get these in the form of compression as well. But if you mess up with the compression, you're going to need to have to cut the end off and start again. Uh, but So this is the best version if you're not confident. I'm doing this with this method with wire cutters. Um, but there are other tools you can use, which I will demonstrate in another video. So anyways, um, I do this all the time, so I'm very confident. I mean, I do this every day, every other day. I have done this before, so uh, there's no need to uh, say this guy doesn't know what he's doing. <sighs> anyway, you want to take off uh, a centimetre of the sleeving. Now, I'm just getting it right in the cable. <laughs> Sorry, the camera angle. It's a bit harder, yeah. So I'm going to do a centimetre. I'm just going to take the sleeving off. So to do this, I'm just going to run it around like that, not push down it too hard, just enough to cut the black sleeving off of it. Of course, you can get this cable in other colours, uh, white, but I prefer black. So just make sure you spin it correctly. It should just pop off like that. And then you've got your shield in sleeving. And you want to pull that back. Like that. But what I'm going to do is, because it sometimes messes up, I'm going to cut it, give it a haircut. It's what I call uh, camel hair. <laughs> so I've taken a centimetre off the sleeve. Make sure you do a centimetre. Because, and if you're not confident with a centimetre guessing, then you want to get a tape measure out ruler so i'm just giving that quick haircut i literally i don't want to take it all off i just want enough so that way when i put the threader through it doesn't um how would you say i won't get hairs poking out of the connection Obviously, I'm going to get some person commenting, I ain't not doing it right. Yeah, this guy's a fool. Don't do it this way. He's, But uh, it, my, my method works. So i like to see him do it. Show, show you how to do it any better. Okay. So now I'm going to... Do half a centimetre again. This time... Taken off the aluminum foil and now I'm going to take off the plastic well, insert and that should just pop up. So I'm going to get my F connector and, and I'm going to, this is separates the men from the boys. There's obviously how hard you can twist it so you just want to keep twisting it. Then also keep an eye on inside, make sure that the actual thing touches the walls correctly. This is a WF100 cable uh, by Webro. I've got the 125 as well as the WF, uh, WF165. Uh, that's a great cable, recommended, but not for this sort of job. Um, but it's long runs sort of thing. It's normally used in commercial usage. I did use it on a satellite dish and I did get really great signal um, on it. No signal loss, but the problem was it wasn't very flexible. So, yeah, I ended up having to change it in the end to WF100 because it was the most flexible cable and best quality that you can get a hold of. I mean, W, you can get HD 100 as well, but that's just marginable really in quality. Coincidentally, I do have that cable as well. I've got quite a few different cables, so it's always good to have variety. You never know what cable you want. 
but this is obviously this is about a hundred pound for a barrel of this cable um so it's not the cheapest you if you want to go the cheap method depending on what you want to use it for you can get a hundred uh meters off of ebay just a standard coaxial cable for about 20 30 quid as i said if you're not that bothered or if you're doing it for some uh, a mate or you're doing it for i mean m most installers will use the cheapest possible cable that they can find sky uses wf 65 which is um yeah it's inferior but anyway it's obviously that's because um what you had was with the old older satellite most people with the older satellite generation um are uh obviously say 20 years ago when satellite systems used analog you needed a certain quality of cable to um but it didn't have shielding that was the difference the, the their modern coaxial cable you know that's that uh foil sleeve you have on there that wasn't on it and the actual plastic that uh made up the um yeah the, the actual plastic that made up the um Uh, the between the um, the copper and the uh, the braiding that had holes in it, and what happened there was water used to run in between it, and um, you end up having corrosion. This one's been a bit more stubborn than the last one. Okay, so it's finally done it. This one's a little bit more messier than I wanted, but uh. Anyway, hey ho. So going again, I'm gonna cut the overlap on the camel hair. It's not the word. It's not. It's, it's it's called braiding, but I call it camel hair because it's very similar to camel hair. So now I want to take the plastic insert off. it in what this is basically I'm making here it's not an actual cable to run to my satellite dish it's literally I've got face plates that I've put in the walls and I it's basically a it's a, it's a patch cable so it will run into the wall I mean what well, it, will, it will basically connect to um Okay, so that one's done. Yeah, so basically so I've got the two ends in there. So this one will go into the satellite receiver and this one will go into the face plate. So that's uh, that's it. And so this is basically just showing you how to do it with bare minimum tools. Obviously, you'll get a much more cleaner job if you use the correct ones. 
uh, when the ones that have been designed for to make it installation more easier. I'm sure there's going to be some sky engineers that are going to watch it and say, oh, I've got all those tools to make it easier. You made it harder on yourself by doing it that way. But oh, well, <laughs> like I said, <laughs> there's always another way of doing it. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Please click that like. I will definitely do the more professional video showing you how to do it with the compression as well as doing this method again with the actual uh, correct tools. So, but this is obviously just what you normally would run in your basically in your house. Or if, I found if you can actually do it with even these, if you've got these kind of quality scissors, these are quite old. Don't know what they. But they, they, these look to will cut through anything. <laughs> it's cut through cable, everything. So, yeah. So, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye for now.